Try to do that, and then I'll push this back that way, so that way you'll have room to get by. None of us old people. Whew. <laughs> it's 6:23. Okay, so. Who are you talking about? Um, do y'all need to go over anything specifically? Yeah, let's do the last verse one more time. <coughs> Come thou fount, last Come verse. Come thou fount. <coughs> Come thou yeah. Okay, so. There's a one in my mind. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace flow like a fetter by my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to live, O oh God, I love. Where's my heart, Lord? Take and seal it. Seal it for the courts of Quartz. 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 Like the, like, like the mineral. Like the mineral. Not quartz. Quartz. I'm just going to sit up here. I'm not moving.
Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's 6.30, and so thank you all for making it out, and we might have some stragglers coming in as their people are getting off work um, and everything like that. So I uh, also wanted to extend a, a welcome to those worshiping with us online. If you have um, water or if, and if you have a bread and juice, uh, that would be helpful to, to go ahead and grab and to prepare uh, as we hope to worship all together uh, this evening for Maundy Thursday. On this night, Jesus took a towel and a basin and He washed His disciples' feet. On this night, He told them to do the same for others, to show their love for Him and for one another. This is the night of love. On this night, Jesus broke bread and shared wine with His followers for the last time and invited them to remember Him, to encounter Him anew whenever they did the same. This is the night of love. On this night, followers of Jesus have welcomed those who have returned to the way of Jesus after a time of wandering and a journey of returning. This is the night of love. This is the night of love. And so, on this night, we welcome the penitent, all here who have wandered, and invite all preparing, all here who are still learning, to join us in hearing and obeying the commandment of our Master Jesus and a feast at His table that we may love one another as He has loved us. Come sinners. Come those who are hungry and thirsty. Come those who are weary. Come to the night of love. Alrighty, good evening everybody. I'd like to invite everyone to stand if y'all want to sing our first song, The Old Rugged Cross. this again. Okay. 
I'm not sure if this keeps sh shutting off, but we'll get through it. Friends, our, our scripture lesson for this evening comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17, as well as verses 31. The passage says this, Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave this world to go to the Father. Having loved His dear companions, He continued to love them right to the end. It was supper time. The devil by now had Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, firmly in his grip, all set for the betrayal. Jesus knew that the Father had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was going on his way back to God. So he got up from the table, set aside his robe, and put on an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of his disciples, drying them with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted, you're not going to wash my feet ever. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you can't be a part of what I'm doing. Master, said Peter, not only my feet, then wash my hands, wash my head. Jesus said, if you've had a bath in the morning, you only need wash your feet, or you only need your feet washed now, and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean. But not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him. That's why he said, not every one of you, after he had finished washing their feet, he took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. Then he said, do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I lay down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee does not give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. When he had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is, and God's seen for who he, who he is in him. The moment God is seen in him, God's glory will be on display. And glorifying him, he himself is glorified. Glory all around. Children, I am with you for only a little for only a short time longer. You are going to look high and low for me, but just as I told the Jews, I am telling you, where I go, you are not able to come. Let me give you a new command: love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. Friends, this is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you were here this past Sunday, you'll remember that we observed the start of Holy Week with Palm Sunday. It's the part of the Gospel story where Jesus enters into the city of Jerusalem amongst the people gathered for the celebration of the Passover festival. And as He enters, everyone worships Him. They call Jesus their chosen King and Savior, their Messiah, throwing down palm branches as a sign of ushering in this new King. The problem is that Jesus would end up becoming a different kind of King than what most people were expecting. 
including the disciples. And this was signaled by how Jesus entered Jerusalem. Not on the back of a horse, which was often associated with war or political prominence, but instead he entered on a humble donkey, a symbol of peace. Jesus did not come to conquer, but instead came to serve, to help, and to save. Jesus came to lead us into a new kind of kingdom, what we often refer to as an upside-down kingdom. One that invites its leaders to serve the least rather than the other way around, to be like Jesus. And while this seems like an obvious clue to us on this side of history, the the celebration of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem as this beloved king eroded as the week went on. It eroded into betrayal and rejection. As people began to realize that Jesus' kingdom wasn't going to look like what they thought. When they realized this, They rejected it. They rejected Him. They were unwilling to see this new kingdom in the way that Jesus had been teaching and embodying all along throughout His ministry. And even though Jesus knew this rejection was coming and the the tension would only continue to build, He didn't give up. Just as things were only going to get worse, Jesus does something profound. He pauses to offer yet one more act of love that embodies the kingdom of God, an action that would serve as a practical lesson and reminder of what's required, of what's required to enter and to thrive in this new kingdom. Jesus humbles himself yet again to underscore the posture that his followers are supposed to have. And so I think it's helpful to ask ourselves. How is Jesus able to do this in the midst of all these troubling and challenging circumstances? In other words, where is this coming from? Well, we get a clue at the beginning of the passage. In the midst of unfolding betrayal and rejection, Jesus chooses. He chooses to receive what the Father had to give him instead of what his enemies were planning to give him. Jesus chose to receive what the Father had given him instead of what his enemies were planning to give him. Rather than respond to the the plots of those conspiring against him with fear or anxiety or control and conquest, Jesus responds with an act of humility to love his friends to the very end, even the ones that would betray him or abandon him, which becomes a sort of snapshot, if you will, of what would happen just hours later with Jesus on the cross. Yet another act of love for the broken world that would initially reject him. Jesus was able to do what he was able to do throughout his life and ministry because He was more concerned about receiving what the Father was giving rather than what the world had to give. Because what the Father gives always, it always leads to life and to love, which is in stark contrast to what the world gives. And Jesus commands us to do just as He has done. Receive and rely on what the Father has to give. And when you receive and rely on what the Father has to give, you will live in the world differently. You will learn to give as Jesus gives and enter into this new, beloved kingdom of God, which can only be done by receiving and relying on the unending, faithful love of God. And so the question is, will we receive? Will we receive or will we reject what Jesus is leading us to do and to become? Are we willing to lay down our lives, to humble ourselves 
in order to trust and live out the way and will of Jesus. And so this humble gesture of washing His disciples' feet isn't just a metaphor. It's a command to turn to our neighbors, to our friends and our enemies, to roll up our sleeves, bring in the renewing waters of Christ, and start washing each other, as it were. In the words of Peter, to start washing each other from head to toe so that we might all be made clean. What we're striving to do and to become is to allow the love of the Father or the love that the Father has to give us to begin working in us, but then to also begin working through us in such a way that we help each other clean up and restore our lives. And so I'd like our takeaway for this evening to be for us to ask, how do we more consistently live in the way and will of Jesus by focusing solely on what the Father has to give us rather than what the world has to give us? How do we focus on more of what the Father has to give rather than what the world has to give in order to consistently live out the way and will of Jesus? Because when we do, we will grow to become encouragers. We'll grow to be uplifters. We'll grow to be peacemakers who help to usher in this new kind of kingdom that Jesus taught, that Jesus embodied, and that Jesus died for us to have, to give to all of us. And the risk is that if we don't, if we decide to reject Jesus and and let ourselves continue to be provoked or overcome by the brokenness of the world, then we will likely only contribute to more and more brokenness, to this pattern of, of brokenness we experience in the world. And so in order to live a different way, we have to receive a different way. In order to live a different way, we have to receive a different way. We have to choose to receive what the Father has to give. Because living the will and way of Jesus, humbling ourselves and serving even our enemies, is the only way that the cycle of brokenness can be repaired and redeemed. Are we distracted from or are we dedicated to God's love? what God has to give us. Because if we're dedicated, we're likely to get a little messy, but the brokenness will become beautiful. The work of loving and serving others will become the work of God that will be unfolding in our midst. Helping us all take a step toward the kingdom that Jesus died to give. Amen? Amen. Would you join me in prayer? God, on this night of love, as we remember the many actions and their lessons that they teach us, help us to remember what Jesus has done for us. And help us to do as Jesus has done. Help us to receive Your grace. Help us to receive Your forgiveness and mercy. And then help us to share that with other people. God, don't let this just be a symbol that we celebrate from something long ago. Let it, let it have a, an impact and an emphasis in our lives by the way we choose to live. Help us to consider what we're willing to let go, to sacrifice, and to give. Help us, Lord, to give as Your Son Jesus gives, and not as the world gives. We love You, Lord, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Again, this is the night of love. Jesus washed his disciples' feet, reversing roles of master and student, servant and host, and told them to do the same to show the world God's love and theirs. On this night, we wash each other's hands, obeying Christ's command to one another as he has loved us. Come, let Christ love you here and share that love with another. This is the night of love. At this table, Christ who loves us is with us. He is with us and we belong to God. We are yours, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All our lives, all our thanks, all our praise, all our fears, all our grumbling, all our hesitations, all our loves, all our joys, all our passions, we give them all to You. You preached good news that God's kingdom has drawn near and gathered disciples then and now to learn and show the world what life in God's reign means. Healing for the sick, new life for the dead, food for the hungry, freedom for the oppressed, love poured out for all. Jesus, You were worthy the night You took a towel and basin, washed Your disciples' feet, and taught them to do likewise. Jesus, You were also worthy the same night we betrayed You, when You took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to Your disciples. Worthy when You told them, this is My body given for You. Remember Me. We remember. Worthy when You took the cup, praised God and shared it, and worthy when you said, this is my blood of the new covenant for you. Remember me. We remember. We remember and we praise you with our lives and these gifts of bread and the cup, proclaiming with one voice the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these gifts and make them be for us Christ's body and Christ's blood, that we might be one in heart, one in mind, and one in You. Holy Spirit, as You moved us to pray for the church and for the world, that healing may come for people who are sick, for people who are torn, and for people who are weary. Hear us, Lord. That we may love one another and all Your creation. May it be so, Lord. Even so, come and fill this feast, Holy Spirit, on this night and every night until we eat it anew with You at Your heavenly banquet. All blessing, honor, glory, and power be Yours, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. This is the night of love. Let us come to be served with grace and forgiveness through the washing of our hands and through the eating of the bread and the drinking of the cup.
Let us give thanks to God together. Thank you, God, for uniting us with Jesus in this holy mystery. We are no longer our own, but yours. So send us and put us to leading and serving, loving as you have loved us wherever we go. Amen. Friends, this is the night of love. Go forth in the strength of this feast, in the care of this community, and with the love and blessing of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. And everyone said, Amen. Probably would help there. There we go. Okay. All right, everybody. If I could have you all stand one more time as we sing our last song, Come Thou Fount. as I was washing your hands, I was supposed to say, <laughs> remember that Christ came to be served. Excuse me, came to serve and not be served. Go and do likewise. 